Welcome to our fourth screencast on writing in plain legal English. In this screencast I want to introduce three new principles. The first of which is make everything you write speakable. By speakable I don't mean conversational. When we speak to our friends casually we tend to leave a lot of information out. We rely on the listener to fill in gaps in what we're saying. We don't always speak in complete sentences. So if you write in a conversational way as a law student or in practice uh, in a business context as a lawyer, you're going to not be getting across all the information you need and you're probably not going to be terribly clear. So what do I mean by speakable? By speakable I mean watch out for ridiculous, wordy, strange legal phrases by simply asking yourself, could I say this out loud without sounding ridiculous. So here are some examples. They're all from a business writing context, but they are good examples of the kind of overly wordy, overly loyally phrases that we sometimes use if we're not careful. Again, all of these are taken from Garner's book. Enclosed, please find the following documents. We'd never say that out loud. We'd say, I've enclosed the following documents, or I enclose the following documents. Pursuant to your instructions, I met with Roger Smith today regarding the above referenced cause. Following your instructions, I met with Roger Smith today regarding your case. Pursuant to my conversation with Alex in your office on today's date, I contacted the trustee. After speaking with Alex in your office today, I contacted the trustee. This letter is for the purpose of retaining your services as a consultant regarding the above referenced matter. We would like to retain your services as a consultant in this case. So just use that is it speakable test as a reality check. Am I writing in a formal manner, but am I writing in a way that isn't full of loyally phrases and ultimately slightly ridiculous? Let's move on. Two new principles um, that are relevant to all legal writing. The first is get straight to the point. Your introduction should frame the principal issue. Second, introduce each paragraph with a topic sentence. I'll come back to the idea of topic sentences. Let's go with uh, a good introduction. How do you get straight to the point? The example I'm about to give comes from my own writing practice. Uh, I wrote a PhD in graduate school and then later turned it into a book. And I'm going to show you an opening paragraph from a draft chapter of the PhD and then from the finished book. Uh, to understand the paragraph you just need perhaps one word of specialist vocabulary which is interdiction. This just means stopping and searching ships because my work was about stopping and searching ships on the high seas. Anyway, here we go. Here's a chapter introduction from a draft of my PhD. Modest inroads into the principle of exclusive flag state jurisdiction upon the high seas are being made in the context of internationally managed fisheries and the law applicable to them. Interdiction as a fishery management tool is best understood in a broad historical context. The freedom to fish, a central historical freedom of the high seas, was first a corollary of the proposition that fish were an inexhaustible resource. Not an opening paragraph I'm particularly proud of. It's quite flabby, it meanders, it throws a lot of ideas up in the air at once. But you get some basics, perhaps. You can see that I'm interested here in fisheries management, when we need to use interdiction, that is when we need to use stop and search, and how this law has emerged historically and the ideas that originally justified it. So let's see if uh, the opening to the book chapter is any clearer. The freedom to fish, a fundamental historical freedom of the high seas, was first justified on the basis that fish were an inexhaustible resource. Before the introduction of industrial fishing technology, this may have been a reasonable assumption. But open access to the high seas fisheries as a global commons has led to over-exploitation. Attempts to manage diminishing fish stocks in international law have taken two forms. I think this works, hopefully, you think it works, much better. Okay. We've started out with the idea that I'm talking about the freedom to fish. I've explained a little bit of the history. I've explained why those historical assumptions no longer work. I've talked about over-exploitation 
then I come to the idea that we need to manage that over-exploitation. So hopefully all the ideas follow, it's clearer, I'm using less wordy phrases, and in accordance with principles we've discussed before, I'm trying to use shorter sentences and clearer sentences. Okay, but perhaps this could still have a much better introduction, a topic sentence, one sentence that sums up where the rest of the paragraph is going. So every essay you write, every business document you write, the opening sentence of each paragraph should communicate clearly what the rest of the paragraph will be about. So I'm going to take an example um, from a different context now. Another thing I'm interested in is teaching and teaching theory. So here's a paragraph about the process of teaching. And the exercise is, can we come up with a topic sentence that sums up what's going on here? So the paragraph is, teachers in a traditional classroom stand at the whiteboard trying to get 30 or so students to learn the same thing at the same pace. The result is that they have to teach to the middle of the ability range. But as a consequence, the brighter students get bored and turn off, and those struggling to keep up get lost and turn off. Soon half the class isn't listening. The result is bad both for the class and the teacher's job satisfaction. So each of those sentences follows fairly logically, but there's not one sentence at the top that explains everything that follows. So the question is, can you come up with one? Actually, this might be a good point to pause the video and write one down and then see where we get to. So if you want to do that, pause now. But if you want to see what I've done, well, here it is. How could we introduce that paragraph? We could introduce it with something like, teachers are frustrated by having to teach to the middle of a class. Now, I've borrowed that paragraph. Well, I've, I've rewritten it in my own words, but it comes from a Wired magazine article on the Khan Academy. So in order to reference my sources properly, you might like to use that shortened URL to go look it up if you're interested. But the se topic sentence that inspired me there was, uh, the one I've got at the bottom of the slide. For years, teachers have complained about the frustrations of teaching to the middle of the class. It sets you up beautifully for all the information that follows, and very good, high-quality journalism of the kind you find in Wired magazine, The Economist, or major newspapers uh, can give good examples of uses of topic sentences, and uh, those are worth exploring. So to sum up, the three things we've talked about in this screencast are make everything you write speakable, not conversational, but check you could say it out loud without sounding silly. Get straight to the point in the introduction to any document you're writing. And always use topic sentences. Make sure that the first sentence of your paragraph clearly communicates what the rest of the paragraph is going to be about. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you'll tune in uh, to the next of these screencasts on writing in plain legal English.